Today we have the distinct honor to welcome Jason Tash. Jason is the National Director of Development at Destiny Rescue. Destiny Rescue is an international recognized Christian nonprofit organization dedicated to rescuing children trapped in the sex trade. Their vision is to rescue the sexually exploited and enslaved, restore the abused, protect the vulnerable, empower the poor, and be a voice for those who can't speak up for themselves. They currently operate their various programs in Thailand, Cambodia, the Dominican Republic, the Philippines, and India. They also have offices in three donor nations, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Since 2011, they've rescued over 2,000 children enslaved around the world, helped keep hundreds more from entering the sex trade through their various prevention programs, ensure justice for those who have been wronged, and raised awareness to untold numbers. Destiny Rescue realizes that human trafficking is a global problem. They're determined to respond to God's call to set the captives free worldwide until no more children are sold, forced, or coerced into the sex trade. Destiny Rescue is fully committed to fighting for their freedom, their restoration, and their futures. Without further ado, let's now join Jason in the sanctuary here at Faith Outreach Center. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who didn't know, uh, yesterday and Friday, uh, the youth, some adults, there's a total of 18 youth, and I believe at least four adults or maybe more, did a 30-hour fast. This is our third year in a row doing it, and typically we've tied it into uh, World Vision's 30-hour famine, and the idea is raising money for world hunger initiatives. And that's been an excellent uh, experience and fundraiser, and it's been really good. And so... Basically, this year, that's kind of the thing uh, look at when planning youth events. Thought, okay, let's schedule this uh, towards the end of spring. And then um, Terry and I were here one day, and uh, basically a, a man named Steve Hill came and just kind of cold called, kind of walked in, said, hey, we, he represents a ministry not too far from here, and kind of gave us a little bit of a spiel. And basically, we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> to be honest, we get a lot of walk-ins, and you get all kinds, and so... You never know how to gauge what comes in, what doesn't. You know, we pray, we do what we can, but when he told us it was for rescuing children who are trapped in the sex industry, those who are literally being sold into it, being treated like a thing and not a person, it really touched both of our hearts, and we said, let's get more information. And all of that being said, um, going into this year's 30-hour uh, famine season, we thought, you know what, let's keep the event, but let's kind of retool it. Rather than fasting for hunger initiatives, which is a wonderful cause, we said, let's try to get involved with um, this organization called Destiny Rescue, and let's do a freedom fast. Um, basically, there's a verse in Isaiah where he talks about what God is looking for in fasting, and it's Isaiah 58, and he basically says to loose the chains of those who are oppressed, to bring freedom to those in bondage, and that your fasting would be more than just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. Because when you're not eating, that's easy to do. And so that is a motivation, that is uh, the challenge given to the teens, and they responded tremendously. Like I said, we had 18 teens go 30 hours without food. That's a big deal. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and there were some adults. If you fasted, please stand up. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and obviously the fasting is to glorify God, it's to humble ourselves, and so we're not supposed to be like, put them on a pedestal, but I kind of want to. <laughs> it's kind of a catch-22, because it's a really tough thing, and they did it. They did it with good attitudes. We did some work projects. We played um, simulation-type games to kind of give them awareness, because as we've talked a lot, this is a problem that happens over there, but it's a problem that happens over here. The dynamics, the uh, living conditions are a little different. The motivations may be different, but a problem's a problem. And so this has been just a great... A uh, series of teachings building up to what to our guests this morning. And uh, to all the parents, I know this was definitely a tough subject, and we tried to handle it as uh, delicately as possible. And, you know, I just want to say I appreciate the understanding with that. And um, our guest speaker today is uh, named Jason. He's been working with Destiny Rescue for a while, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit more. He's got a great presentation. They've also got some uh, jewelry and some items that are made by the girls that they rescue. Because it's not enough just to bring them out of that condition. They then have to give them skills and counseling and 
the gospel and all these things to ensure that they don't go back into that lifestyle. And so he's going to give you kind of a comprehensive view of everything they do and why they're a great organization. So if you could, give Jason your appreciation. It has, um, it has been good already to, to, to be here with you. I've, I'm, I've already been blessed, so thank you. Just from walking in and the, um, the welcoming smiles and the, the handshakes and the questions and just the friendship and the um, availability to help, uh, you, you just have a, a genuine spirit about you, and, and I'm just thankful to be here. I also I do want to back up. I want to brag on your student ministry and the leadership. Um, I, don't, I don't sign up to hang out with teenagers who haven't eaten for 30 hours. Just a, a day at school coming home is ravage enough. And so you, 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 you keep them up all night and you don't feed them. And then you make them do work on an early Saturday morning. Uh, and, but your students had an amazing attitude. Uh, they were um, enjoying one another. They were engaged. They were asking questions. They, they were willing and uh, they just had a servant's heart. And you could tell they chose to be there, they wanted to be there, and you have a lot to be thankful for in your, in your leadership and in your student ministry and all that is happening in the DNA of, of this growing generation that's going to take your leadership forward in the church and present the gospel uh, on throughout the community and the world. So I just want to say thank you and congratulations to what you're doing. It's, it's doing a good thing. I hope, I hope that I'm also amongst a group of people that know you've been rescued. God has rescued you. I, I, I know I've, I have been rescued and God is continuing to rescue me. I've been rescued and he's continuing to rescue me. And I believe he's done that for you. My favorite, my, kind of my life verse you'll find in Acts twenty twenty four. I consider my life w- uh, worth nothing. I consider my life worth nothing except to complete the race and finish the task which Christ has called me to do, to testify of his good grace. To me, what that's saying is I have been rescued to rescue others. He didn't rescue me because there's any good about me. He didn't rescue you because there's something really good about you. It is to glorify him and to somehow be this example to others of the life that they can have. You, church, you are the salt of the earth. You preserve his truth. You preserve his values. You, you apply his healing balm to the wounded, to the afflicted. You're able to uh, penetrate darkness. You're able to penetrate darkness with light, and, and you are this light on a hill, and you get to rescue. Any day you choose to be on mission with Christ, he's sending you out to rescue. It doesn't just happen over there. It happens. It happens here. I'm just, I'm a guy that's been rescued to rescue others. Destiny Rescue um, has began 16 years ago. Our founder, Tony, was from Australia. He went with his church to a mission trip in Cambodia And while he was in Cambodia, his heart broke for children that were not having adequate, viable opportunities for a thriving life. He saw extreme desperation, poverty, and just the breakdown of culture and community. And his heart was broken. He went back home and he um, began to share with his wife. They shared with one another and God certainly had been speaking to them both. So they went to volunteer in Thailand and Cambodia with another organization. While they were doing some work in Thailand, a gentleman came up and offered a child to him for sexual pleasure for 400 US dollars. And it wrenched his heart. It just dropped the bottom out of his stomach. He didn't, wasn't familiar with it. And so he asked, what was, what, was that, what was that about? What's going on? And they explained to him the issue of child sex trafficking and how it's um, this uh, incredible epidemic, incredible is the wrong word, this vile, wicked epidemic that is happening uh, all across uh, the earth. And so he went back to Australia, sold his business, sold his home, sold everything he had, picked up his family and moved to Thailand and began the work of Destiny Rescue, and we began to grow and uh, began um, 
launching out rescue and restoration projects across six other nations and three other countries rose up and says, we want to join the fight and help to make sure that this work doesn't stop, that in fact, we want to join our hearts with you and say that we can end child sex slavery in our lifetime. And so that's the fight that we've been doing. We work not just to rescue. So when we rescue a girl, uh, when we rescue a child, uh, for the most part, that's our priorities, rescuing children, and 97% of them are, are girls. It's not just enough to rescue them out of location and vocation, but we want to get involved with their family. We want to get involved in their life. We want to be a part of the restoration process that redeems the image of God that was born in them when he created them. We want them to have the destiny that God has planned for them, the hope that he has for them, the future that he has for them, but they don't know about it, they haven't heard about it, they've not been treated, they've been in a way that would uh, allow them to even understand it. And so when we uh, rescue them, we don't rescue them from slavery to make them a slave to destiny rescue. We rescue them and we give them a choice. This is going to sound familiar. I bet you've read it somewhere. Do you want to get well? Do you want a better life? Do you want a better opportunity? Do you want something more for yourself and more for your family? Would you allow us to come alongside you and help? Not one girl has ever said, no, I like it. But every girl has experienced and encountered the heart of God. And so as we rescue them out of vocation and location and we begin the restoration, the first thing that we want to do is we just want to give that girl a safe bed because beds are made for sleeping, not working. And every child deserves a safe bed. So the first thing we just want to do is as we begin to restore her dignity back and show honor to her is just give her a safe bed and show that we're trustworthy. Let her rest, let her sleep, let her eat. We let her be a kid again. We help her be a kid again. We take her to fun places. We let her laugh and make friends and enjoy life. We assess her, life, her, her health, her, her uh, health status and her life skills. Uh, many of them have not been taught proper hygiene or they've not been taught proper touch or the, the best way of communication or how to handle yourself kind of physically, what's too close and just all of these incredible life skills that we take for granted. We're teaching them life skills and assessing their health skills and, uh, and needs and meeting those needs. Um, we're also assessing their education we will help them complete their education so that they can have better opportunity. We allow them to dream as they begin to dream and what they want to do. We partner with other um, businesses and organizations across the countries that, uh, so they can find the vocation, the job, the career that they've wanted to do. We have several girls now that are teachers, teacher assistants, nurses. Uh, they work in the hotel industry. Uh, they're owning their own hair salon, nail salon, their own coffee shop. Uh, some have gone into the farming. Uh, many, just all kinds of things, that, uh, opportunities that they have. And so we want to give them an opportunity to do the job that maybe they've always wanted to do to take care of their family. We also empower them with Christ-centered counseling. But even before, even throughout the counseling, we're always talking to them about the God that created them and the God that rescued us to rescue them and the God that has good for them, a God that has a future for them and wants to restore their family. And so as they're saying, when they say yes to Jesus, we begin Christian discipleship. And we help them plug into a local church. We have several uh, local church friends and partners there in their country. And so they can begin to even minister to the needs of the family and help uh, uh, disciple the family as, as a whole. Rescuing and restoring, I believe, is at the very center of God's heart. It's the whole reason he came. Jesus is God's greatest rescue mission. He came to rescue and restore us. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundantly. And, and he has then sent us to be these testimonies of his grace that others might know the opportunity that they have. I have a brief overview video that I'd love to show you of the holistic work of Destiny Rescue. Every year, 1.2 million kids are trafficked 
throughout our world. These kids face unimaginable suffering at the hands of their abusers. I've got kids of my own and I've got a, a 12 year old daughter and the thought of her being in one of these situations for one, one second is enough to get you up in the morning and want to make a difference in a kid's life because they're someone's daughter, they're someone's son. That's the hard thing is, is sitting back as a, as a dad, seeing, and, and when you leave that night knowing that this girl could be having to sleep with someone again tomorrow if you can't get her out, that's hard. It's just, I guess it's just people saying enough's enough. The highlight about rescuing girls is, is seeing them uh, in church, uh, you know, meeting God a few weeks after we brought them into the program, you know, knowing, knowing that what they'd been through in the bars, you know, uh, hearing their stories, what the girls tell you, sitting with them in the bars and then seeing them doing business with God on, on a Sunday morning, you know, for the first time is, is the best thing about it. It's, it's, it's where the real rescue happens. Can you imagine your child dragged off into a bar and she's raped and sometimes by more than one man. Then the next night she's pulled out of her room terrified and she's put back into that bar again. And there is no respect for these girls. They are touched, mauled, handled, laughed at, joked about, inappropriately grabbed and then used and abused again. For their services, sometimes they get the grand sum of four or five dollars. Jesus gives a supernatural grace to his children that they can forgive, that they can be free. There's a healing that takes place that is so deep and so profound. These children are able to live their life again. And, and I, see, I see what Jesus does in five minutes of profound healing and prayer, what, what would take a lifetime. When they come to us, we know their past, we know what they've been through. But it's the first day they step foot in hairdressing, we're looking at their future. Their past has no bearing on who they are or what they're going to do. Their past ends as soon as they walk through those doors. I love getting to teach them and see them every day. And you see them come in and they just don't know hairdressing. And then you get to love them and teach them and just show them Jesus. And then six, eight months later, they're cutting hair, they're coloring hair. They're so confident. And you just see this complete transformation. I could tell you story after story after story like that. What God does, because He loves His kids so much. It's Him doing the calling. It's Him doing the rescuing. It's Him. It's Him. We've just got the privilege of hearing it and being part of it. Ecclesiastes 4.1, it um, becomes very visual and evident, maybe where you can Connect with the heart of Ecclesiastes 4.1. Again, I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed. They have no comforter. Power was on the side of the oppressors and they have no comforter. It's overwhelming to think that in in, human, in the human trafficking industry, it is the largest, fastest growing illegal enterprise in the world. Human trafficking generates $150 billion per year. Out of the $150 billion per year, $99 billion of that fuels sexual exploitation. Seven out of the 10 victims that are trafficked are going to be trafficked out of Asia in the Pacific region. But our role as Destiny Rescue, we, we focus primarily that God has called us to go into some of the darkest places and to rescue children because we know this, that over one million children are trafficked each year. And that's daunting, overwhelming, staggering. And I think about it and, and it's, it almost paralyzes you to 
think about how many children are being trafficked. I, I think of a story even um, in, in the Bible we read in Mark chapter 6, and it, Jesus had been doing ministry with his disciples long and hard, and they've had some very uh, filled days, and they needed to get away by themselves. They wanted to get away by themselves. I don't know if you've ever been tired of people, but there were times Jesus got tired of people. He was human. He was God, and he was human. And you just kind of see, you can feel, you can hear a little bit of the fatigue at times. And he just wanted to get away with his disciples and pray. And so he tried to get across the lake. But everybody saw where he was going and they beat him. They, they t- took the in route and they met him there. And as he got up and says this, he saw the crowd. And he had compassion on them. And they were sheep without a shepherd. And so he began to teach them and minister to them. Well, it was getting late into the evening and the disciples are noticing, kind of like maybe the teenagers, uh, the students Last, uh, yesterday or over the weekend, hey, it's been like 30 hours, they're hungry, they're hangry. You know what hangry is, right? Yeah, good. If I don't get fed, someone's going to die. The disciples saw this in the eyes of the people. Philip kind of nudges Jesus, got to cut it short, you're going long-winded, they're getting hungry. It's a long way away from Taco Bell where the fourth meal is, you've got to send them home. And it says that there were 5,000, but that's just men. So we know that it was a triple that. I don't know, it was a large number because there was women and there was kids. There was just a lot of people. Phil, I mean, just as far as the eye could see, tons of people. And, and, and Philip's trying to take care of him because you've got to send them home so they can eat. You've got to do something about it, Jesus. And he turns and just kind of eyeball out one on. Philip, you, you feed them. And I, I just have to imagine that Philip felt overwhelmed, that he wanted to do something for Jesus. He wanted to be obedient. He wanted to do what he asked. But in all of his mind, and all of his wisdom, he couldn't, th- what am I going to do? I don't have enough money. We don't have enough money. And I don't know, when you hear this, what goes through your mind, I know anger does. I know frustration does. I know a lot of emotion does. But there also has to be this, well, what can I do? There's so, what do you want me to do? I want to do something. But what? So the disciples, they, they try to, they scour, right? And they, want, they find this little boy and he has a happy meal. I mean, it's just a little bit of crumbs of bread and a little bit of fish. They didn't even come with a toy. And, and somehow they like hijack it from this kid and like, hey, give me that. And um, they offer it. And like, I don't know, Jesus, like this is the best we got. I, I'm just proud of their audacity to bring a little bit. Because I probably would have said, no, nah, that's not enough. But they brought what they had. And, and, and Jesus, he, he does immeasurably more than we could ever ask, dream, or imagine when we give him what we have and say, it's always up to you what you do with it. I'm just available and I'm yours. There's no good about me. There's nothing good that I have that will offer anything eternal, but in your hands, it's salvation. And so you offer it. And I can only imagine as the disciples were doing this, as he set them out and he's praying and he's blessing it out, I, in my mind, as I get myself into the story, as I stood in, uh, in the Holy Land where, where kind of this scene would have happened, I begin to picture it all happen out. And I can hear it and you can too, where the disciples are handing out some bread and handing out some fish and they're going, this is a dumb idea. This is, we're going to look like idiots. This is not going to work. Jesus, you are out of your mind. The son has got, this might work. This might this is working, this is working, and there's leftover. Can I tell you that God still rescues, that every day on average we are rescuing one to two kids a day out of the sex trade, God still rescues. It's working. And then we give and we do and, and we offer our heart, we offer our time, we offer whatever treasure that we have and God does immeasurably, immeasurably more than we could ever think of. It empowers us to go into some of the most darkest places on planet earth and identify children, identify underage girls and we work to set them free. And you have to go in and you, you pose as a customer, but you never touch them inappropriately and you never allow them to touch you inappropriately and you gain their trust and you hear their cries and you hear their made-up stories that they're trying to somehow sell you to save their life. 
and you build enough trust where they'll tell you the truth and you're able to uh, pay a, what's called a bar fine and you're able to take them out into the community where normally this is where bad stuff happens. And as you take them to a cafe and you treat them with dignity, you treat them as an image bearer of, of Jesus. And you, you show them honor and respect. And they realize that you are not there to hurt them but to help them. And you begin to talk about opportunities that could be made available for their life and for their family. And you see a genuine smile. And their posture kind of softens. And you're able to set up an opportunity for them to escape, for them to get out, for them to come into our care where we can give them a better hope and a better future. I'd like to share with you the first part of a girl that we met named Tala. One particular girl, she felt really compelled to work in a bar because her dad lost his job. She was 15 years old and had no other desire except to help mum and dad and help the family get through tough times. Coming from a music background, I generally ask the girls, so what music are you into? And she replied with, oh, I'm into church songs. And that really stuck out for me because it's like, what do you know about churchy kind of songs? And she was telling me her story that night that she was a worship leader, that she was a Sunday school teacher. And um, and that she'd do anything to help mum and dad. I knew that we had to get her out ASAP. She, she was the most selfless person I've ever come across. And uh, it, it didn't take me long to, to break my cover and say, look, this is who I am, this is who I work for. I really want to help you and my team really wants to help you. Would you let us? In, a, in the countries that we work in, there's not a lot of opportunities for 13, 14, 15 year old girls that are trying to help out their family. And so they'll go to places where someone, they think that there's a, it's a trusted person or um, they know that maybe at one time their friend had gone and they think that they could be a waitress or they think that they'll serve drinks, whatever it takes, as he said, to help out because generally attached to a parent are younger siblings and normally attached to that family are grandparents and there's just not a lot of opportunity and girls are not educated very far and so there's... When you are in extreme desperation in impoverished situations, you will always find somebody who is filled with lust and greed to exploit you and take advantage of your vulnerability. And so for a lot of these girls, they'll, they'll go and they think that they're going to do a somewhat of a respectable job for someone of that age and what's allowed. And while they're there, they're tricked and then they're trapped. And they're put in some very vulnerable uh, situations where they are shamed and they can't reveal that shame to their parents or to their family or they will be shunned. And so they're trapped. But God has an incredible way of bringing beauty out of ashes. God has this transforming, most miraculous way that only Jesus can do where he takes the broken parts of our stories, and you can testify to it because he's done it in your life. He takes the broken parts of our stories and he brings beautiful endings to it. I can tell you recently that there was a girl uh, that was identified uh, by a rescue agent. It was going into a brothel yet that we hadn't been into. And while there, um, un identified an underage girl, 
and found out that she was the oldest of four. She was um, going into the 12th grade. She was very fortunate to be able to go into the 12th grade, but she was not able to, um, to do as much schooling as she would like because her dad uh, was, um, was uh, deathly sick. Uh, mom was too old to work, and it was left on her to provide for the family. And so she found herself in this situation. We were able to uh, rescue her out, was able to talk to her about what she would really want to do. She's now working in a hotel. She's um, uh, working in the cleaning department. She's going to school every day. She's earning more than enough income for her family and to take care of her dad and his medical needs. And all of this happened as as they identified to work to rescue her out. And she entered our program so we could begin the restoration process and introduce her to Jesus who has this incredible life planned and lived out for her. This is exactly the opportunity that was provided for Tala, I'd like to show you the beautiful part of her story. I really want to help you, and my team really wants to help you. Would you let us? And she broke down crying, saying, I've been praying for someone like you. I've I've been praying for an angel, a group of angels like you and your team. Yeah. I want to help, yeah. Mum and Dad need the help. And uh, over over the next couple of months, she was able to finish high school and by the next semester into college and get a job at a call centre where she's safe, she works a day job, she works for pretty good money, she's helping out with family. And on top of all that, She's back in church, worship leading again, leading Sunday school for the kids as well. So this huge turnaround, you know, from where she was to going through some dark times, um, you know, to being back in church and and just loving again. You know? So I, I I love that story of, of how um, I don't know, like we we all get that second chance and. And, and it was so true for her. So, yeah. That's what you get to be a part of. That's the impact that you get to celebrate in. That's the taking light into the dark places and being this salt and, and allowing um, this opportunity so they can rewrite their destiny through Jesus. Can I share with you that we have rescued over 2,700 children? Last year, we rescued 620. Already this year, God has given us favor and has been empowering us like never before. Already this year, we've rescued 208. Last week alone, 54 children are freed out of the sex trade. Five 14-year-olds from five different countries are freed. That does not include three infants that we rescued out of the brothel that the brothel owned them but they no longer do those infants are in a loving caring home and will be provided the future that jesus died to give them that's amazing stories the life transformations and opportunities that we that we get to be a part of in the gospels there's a story where it talks where jesus shares this parable and he talks about you remember this where where a man had kind of fallen he was fallen on the side of the road left for dead and there were some passer buyers and Two needed to go way around and the other just didn't have enough time and just wasn't kind of on his agenda to do. But there was one that stopped and he rescued him. And he put him on his transportation and he took him to a safe place. And he began to provide everything that was needed and necessary to restore his life. Whatever it is, that he, whatever cost that, it would, that he would have, put it on my bill. He says, and then Jesus says, who... Who was his neighbor? Who showed love of the neighbor? It was the Good Samaritan. Well, like the Good Samaritan in this story, we as Destiny Rescue, we as the body of Christ are looking for practical ways to come alongside people who are not being heard, who are not being seen, who are being abused, mistreated, 
come alongside and offer practical help and hope to get them to a place where they can rewrite their life, their future, through Christ. It's um, this, this beautiful ending um, in, in Psalms 82.4. I want to, but before I do, I, I, man, this is an amazing story. Uh, it happened in Thailand. There were two girls that went in to find work um, because of calamity that had fallen on their family. They went in to find work. They ended up being tricked and trapped. Um, they weren't allowed to leave because they were, they were brand new and, and young, and, and so they weren't allowed to leave the premises. But in, in one particular girl, on one night, she ran. She, she saw an open opportunity, and she, she ran. I, I wanted to make sure my numbers were right. It's, it's a country of 66 million people where only 1.2% are Christian. This is where she's trapped. 66 million, 1.2% are Christian. She sees an open door of opportunity. She bolts out. She runs to the nearest business that she can find that has a door open and can see a person standing there. That is, for whatever reason, she ran to this business through this open door and found this man. And in 66 million people where 1.2% are Christian, he was a Christian business owner. What's even crazier is he knew about Destiny Rescue. He calls one of our rescue agents. Says, hey, I have here um, a girl underage and she just told me a story. It's exactly who you rescue. Uh, She has another friend and you need to come find her. The girl went back. The rescue agents weren't real familiar with where this brothel was where it was, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, this is the, the, the truth. I'm, they, they walked through the brothel areas, and they were just praying, God, lead us to these two that need rescue, that have come out asking for rescue. And they walked into one, and when they walked in, for whatever reason, somehow this, she just kind of knew, and the girl came out and says, I think you're here for me. And they were able to rescue these two girls out that night, they were able to bring the national police in. They were able to arrest the, the bad guys. It went on national news that uh, the, uh, this place was being shut down and arrested for selling underage girls, and those two girls are now rescued and in the restoration program. This is the work that God does. I think of Psalms 82, 4, where it says, We are to give justice to the poor and the orphan, uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute, rescue the poor and helpless, deliver them from the grasp of evil people. So this is where we get to do our part. And I don't know what kind of fish you have and I don't know what kind of bread you have and I don't know what kind of time you have. But I know this. This is very important to me that before you begin to ask God, God, how would you lead me? How would you want me to get involved to help rescue and restore children over there? What I know is this, is that slavery comes in a lot of different forms. And it is not a respecter of persons. The slavery happens even here still in our own country in a lot of different forms. And for some, it's depression. For some, it's anger. For some, it's addiction. For, it's, it's a lot of different things. And before I would even ask, I think before maybe even God would, would, would call you to be a part of rescuing and restoring someone else, God wants you to know that he doesn't just rescue there, he rescues here. He wants to rescue you. So you can rescue others. And so I would just like to pray over you and maybe you know somebody that needs rescued in your family, in your school, in your neighborhood, your co-worker, somebody that is just, you can tell they're a slave to something that is not godly. And I would just like to pray that God would send you out on rescue and that he would rescue you if needed. Can I pray over you? Heavenly Father, I thank you that we dwell in your presence. And that your will has already been said yes and amen through your son Jesus. And that whatever we ask, that if it be your will, it shall be done. And we know that you have come to set us free. That we would be free indeed. And so Lord, I just pray God that as we begin to understand the calamity, the evil, the wicked that is happening around the world. That we would also not give a blind eye to the snares that the enemy has laid for us for the things that entrap us, for the thoughts that are toxic and have nothing to do with you, for the things that are trying to steal our image and our hope of of you. 
the things that leads us into shame and guilt. God, I pray that you would break those chains, that you would free each and every one, and that there would be this freedom, this deliverance, that we would be a visible evidence of a resurrected Savior that others might know. We get to be a part of the prayer that Jesus prayed where he says that they, of, that they would know. That they would know me because of us. That as the Father sent him, so he sends us. So God, would you speak to us what our best yes is to you this morning in whatever capacity we might know and have deliverance and be able to give it. Freely we received, so freely we give. I pray in Jesus' name. We do have... We have this awesome opportunity out there. It's called becoming a rescue partner. And Jesus settled it with the widow's might. He says, anybody, whatever you give and you give with your heart, it's going to be honored. And that's what a rescue partner is. It's somebody who says, I'm going to set aside some kind of monthly, annual, consistent way to make sure that rescue and restoration is continually happening. So I invite you to join the front lines as a rescue partner and you're going to get continual stories and updates as to how your prayers and your, your fish and loaves are being multiplied in the lives of children. So we have that out there. You can do it today. You can take it home. You can do it online. But it is a way to make sure that rescue and restoration continues to happen across six countries of girls just like Tala. There's also jewelry out there, and it is. It's made by girls. It's been rescued, and all of those funds go directly to the girls to keep them employed so they can have the peace of mind to finish their school, to finish the discipleship, to be restored, to go through counseling, and yet still provide for themselves and their family. So that's what the jewelry does. That's the impact you have when you buy jewelry. You could even host a jewelry party. And we'll send you everything you need at your house or wherever you'd want to do it. And you invite your friends and you get to tell the story. We'll send you what you need to tell the story behind the jewelry and make a big impact that way. There's a place you can sign up for a newsletter. So you can continue to know how we're growing and what the needs are and and the stories that we're celebrating. All of that is out there. I want to leave you with this. There was a girl named Mew. And she finally got to a place where she would trust and allow us to rescue her out and bring her into our care. I was at a Christmas party. She got the courage to stand up and address the other girls that have been rescued and the staff. And Mew says this, I want to thank you for considering my life worthy to rescue Shay says, before I came to Destiny Rescue, my life was very difficult. I'm thankful that you have helped my family with a small business. I'm thankful that Destiny Rescue rescued me. I'm thankful that I have a new skill and I have a new... uh, I'm thankful for the staff who led me to Jesus. Sri Nye says, I want to thank you for introducing me to the bestest God, Jesus. So on behalf of Tala and Shay and Mew and Sri Nye and the staff at Destiny Rescue, thank you. Thank you for carrying these girls in your heart and helping them see a day of rescue and the, their life of restoration. I'm so proud of your student ministry. I think already they are, I think they have exceeded the amount that it takes to rescue a child. They've already made a difference in the life of a child. Thank you. God bless you. If you have made a commitment to Jesus Christ after listening to this message, or if you have any questions concerning our ministry here at Faith Outreach Center, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us through our website at www.faithoutreach.cc or you can call us at 574-223-7631. 
we would be happy to assist you in any way we can. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless. 